Hello and welcome back to MLab 1231, Parasitology and Mycology. My name is Dustin Scott Brewster, and this is going to be the first of a four-part presentation covering the intestinal protozoa. The objectives for this presentation series are going to be to identify the taxonomy which the intestinal protozoa belong, describe the general biological characteristics of the protozoa, explain how humans are infected, list morphological characteristics of common protozoa that cause human infection, and to explain the life cycles of the intestinal protozoa listed. Some of the terminology that we're going to use throughout this series includes chromatin, which is basophilic or bluish purplish stained nuclear DNA. Karyosome, also sometimes called an endosome, is a small mass of chromatin within the nucleus. Peripheral chromatin is chromatin adhering to the nuclear membrane. The nuclear membrane itself is the membrane surrounding the nuclear structure. Chromatoid bars or chromatoid body is a rod-shaped body of condensed RNA within the cytoplasm of some amoebic cysts. Cytosome is a rudimentary mouth. Nosocomial is a type of infection that originates and is acquired in a medical facility. Meragony is the asexual multiplication of coccidian that usually occurs in the intestinal epithelium. Dysentery is a disorder of bloody diarrhea and or mucus in the feces. The organisms we're gonna cover for the intestinal protozoa can be divided into four subphylums. First that we'll cover are the sarcodina or the amoeba they move by means of pseudopodia and include the organisms Entamoeba histolytica, Entamoeba hartmanni, Entamoeba coli, Endolamax nana, Iotamoeba bushlii, and Negleria phalari. The second subphylum is Mystagophora or the flagellates, and they move by long whip like flagella. The organisms in the subphylum include Giardia lamblia, Diantamoeba fragilis, Chylomastix mensleii, and a second group also belonging to Mestagophora are the Trichomonads, and these include Trichomonas hominis and Trichomonas vaginalis. Our third subphylum is Ciliata, or the ciliates and they are propelled by cilia lining the cell surface of the organism. The only organism in this subphylum is Valentidium coli, or the only organism that we're gonna cover in this subphylum is Valentidium coli. Our last subphylum is Sporozoa, Sporozoa or the Sporozoans, and these actually lack organelles for motility. The organisms in this group include Isosporabellii, Cryptosporidium parvum, and Cyclospora scantinensis. Um, the uh, intestinal protozoa can be found in two different stages. Uh, the first, the cyst stage, is the stage which the organism goes into when it is in an environment that is not conducive to growth or reproduction. It is a hardier stage and usually more heat tolerant uh, for long-term dormant stages. And uh, the organism in the cyst stage is non-modal, it is non-feeding, and is a dormant stage of the organism. Once the environmental conditions become conducive to growth, the trophozoite stage will develop from the cyst stage. And this is a modal stage it allows for feeding of the organism and is the stage which the organism reproduces. The diagnostic tools for identifying the organisms in the intestinal protozoa group are the trichrome stain, which is a stain used for fixed fecal smears, and it allows for the identification of nuclear and intracellular structures. 
The next tool for identifying the intestinal protozoa is the wet mount. This stage allows for the visualization of the motility, size, and cytoplasmic inclusions of the protozoa. In the top right image here, we have a trichrome stain of a stool smear highlighting Entamoeba histolytica with the red arrow here pointing to a rod shaped chromatoid body of uh, Entamoeba histolytica. And in the bottom right here, we have a wet mount of a urine specimen showing Trichomonas vaginalis. And if this were actually visualized under the microscope, you would be able to see the motility or the whip-like flagella of the Trichomonas species. This is going to conclude the first of our four-part presentation, and we will pick this back up with our first subphylum of the intestinal protozoa.